we talk about uh, choosing the quote characters, mm -hmm. um, let's suppose they aren't a big name, but they're mm -hmm. very interesting people that have a story that's going to go somewhere. Right. Who are you choosing? The ones you know will bring the most conflict, the most fascinating to watch? You're looking for, um, I talked about casting for conflict where you have personalities that are a little bit different that you assume that they might rub up against each other in the wrong way. I think it's also important um, to have, when you cast people to bring their friends in so that they have a confidant or someone that they can get away to. There can't, if I did a show and it was just you and me, we, it would be a terrible show. And the reason why is because everything that either one of us said would be taken at absolute face value. If I have my best friend, you and I can have a conversation and then I can go to a scene where I just say, listen, I just had this interview and they asked me all these terrible questions about reality television and I put on my brave face for her but I'm so embarrassed and I'm so worried that this is going to get cut funny and I'm going to look like a moron or that some old producer is going to see it and think I'm talking about him. And then I have a scene and then I have a show because now I have something to worry about and, and I don't have to express every thought that I have to you. So yeah, there's casting for conflict, but you also need to make sure that you're, you're filling your cast and rounding it out with characters who will support each other uh, and, and really just sort of be there for the purposes of having those side conversations. And you said earlier that it's very rare that, well, maybe more so now, that you'll cast sort of the everyday Joe mm -hmm. off the street. What are those characters? You said that someone that has a story that's going to go someplace. Mm -hmm. So how do we know their story is actually going to go someplace? Well, here's the thing. If you're, if you're casting someone, make sure that that person has something that's going on in their life, that they have a goal or a vision or an objective for themselves, that they're at a transitional point in their life that's really important to follow, um, where you're anticipating change or you're anticipating action to be happening in your life. If I have two people together and one person really wants to be on a reality show, and she can play the guitar a little bit, and she has a dog. Uh, and the other person comes on, and they can play guitar a little bit, and they have a dog, but also they have this kind of weird adversarial relationship with their mother, who doesn't really want them to be a singer because they don't think it's a very good thing. All of a sudden, that person becomes three-dimensional, and I start thinking about how are we going to get the mother into it? Like, how will we bring the mother into the show? Or the, the, the worry about what mom thinks? And then I can see that going somewhere over the course of a season. Like that person might have to make a decision later about whether or not she can stay in LA because her mother's going to cut her off and not support her and she might have to go home and then you start thinking about all the things that could happen. Or get a job. Yeah. Or get a job. <laughs> you know, I see the most fascinating emails come through from InfoList mm -hmm. for, you know, I love to just read, you know, looking for, you know, right. and, and what is it like being at one of those casting calls. I mean, I know it's whittled down to many mm -hmm. different levels of it. But. I don't work a lot directly with casting. Most of the time the casting is done by the time I get to the show. There are periods where I have interacted with cast members before they've been cast to sort of suss out, you know, just give my two cents as far as who I think will work and who won't. Um, to be in the room for those sorts of castings, the best thing that you can do as a producer is to facilitate allowing that person to be themselves. And that means be cordial, um, talk to them about things, calm them down, be direct with them, let them know that when you're doing a reality show that it's not just about us following you, that you know, once in a while we may ask you specifically, can you have a dinner with this person and talk about a couple things. Sort of lay that groundwork because if people aren't informed very well, then you have a very difficult shoot period where you have two or three weeks at the top where people are just realizing that this isn't what they thought it was going to be. Um, at those castings you have to really prepare people for what the process is so that they can make an informed decision about being on the show. Because if they're miserable they'll clam up and if they clam up you've got real problems. Do you ever have plants in the room? And I'm not talking palms. And by plants in the room you mean? Decoys, people that are listening. To see if somebody's really that person, or are they when once they get in that board? I, I think that the people who do the best jobs of casting reality shows can pick a personality apart on their own without any help. They really know 
how to judge a genuine response. They really know when someone is the person that they're coming to you as. You know, what you don't want is the guy that comes and is like, hey, I'm wild and I'm crazy and I'm whatever. And then the cameras turn on and he's like, oh, I don't want to embarrass myself. You don't want that. And anybody who's really good at casting has seen that person a million times who could turn it on for an audition and just in an inauthentic way and then just can't possibly sustain it for a period of, of 8 to 12 weeks while you shoot the show. 